हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम संजना कबटगी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग एआईटीएम बरगावी लेट अस कंटिन्यू विद द वीडियो लेक्चर्स ऑन कंप्यूटर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो दैट आई पोस्टेड वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट सिंक्रोनस बस दैट द स्कीम दैट वी हैव डिस्क्राइब विद अ सिंपल डिजाइन फॉर द डिवाइसेस इंटरफेस इट हैज सम लिमिटेशंस बिकॉज़ अ ट्रांसफर हैज टू बी कंप्लीटेड विद इन transfer in the sense a data transfer has to be completed within one clock cycle so then the clock period t2 minus t0 should be chosen to accommodate the longest delays on the bus and the slowest device interface so this forces all the devices to operate at the speed of the slowest device also uh, the processor has no way of determining whether the address device has actually responded or not it simply assumes that at clock cycle t2 uh, the output data have been received by the io device or the input data are available on the data lines if because of a malfunction the device does not responded the error will not be detected at this point of time so to overcome these limitations most buses in incorporate control signals that represent a response from the device these signals inform the master that the slave has recognized its address and it is ready to participate in a data transfer operation they also make it possible to adjust the duration of the data transfer period to suits the needs of a participating devices because each device will have its own speed of data transfer so it will adjust the duration of the data transfer period to according to the needs of the participating devices in order to simplify this process high frequency clock cycle uh, clock signal is used such that a complete data transfer cycle would span a several clock cycles it is not just one clock cycle it will take several clock cycles then the number of clock, clock cycles involved can vary from one device to another depending on the devices and the depending on the speed of the data transfer of that particular device the clock cycles will be consumed so it differs from device to device so an example for this is uh, shown in the figure so uh, during clock cycle 1 the master sends an address and command information on the bus requesting a read operation okay so at clock cycle 1 the master sends the address and command information on the bus requesting a read operation so then the slave receives this information and decodes it so on the following active edge of the clock at this the beginning clock cycle that is at the beginning of the clock cycle 2 it makes a decision to respond and begins to access the requested data okay so we have assumed that some delay is involved in getting the data and hence the slave cannot respond immediately so that Uh, that delay will be involved and the slave cannot respond immediately so the data become ready and uh, it is placed on the bus in clock cycle 3 so at the same time the slave asserts a control signal called as slave ready signal okay slave ready signal so then the master which has been waiting for this signal it stops the data into its input buffer at the end of the clock cycle 3 okay so the bus operation now is complete and the master may send a new address to start a new transfer in the clock cycle 4 so the slave ready signal it is like an acknowledgement from the slave to the master confirming that valid data have been sent so in the example that is shown in the figure the slave uh, the slave responds in cycle 3 so another device may respond sooner or later okay the slave ready signal allows the duration of a bus transfer to change from one device to another that again depends on the speed of the data transfer rate of a device okay so if the address device is not responding at all then the master waits for some predefined maximum number of clock cycles and then it aborts the operation so this could be the result of an incorrect address or a device malfunction if there is any in uh, incorrect address sent or if the device is malfunctioning then the slave device it may not respond at all so in that case what the master will do it will wait for some uh, predefined maximum number of clock cycles 
uh, within that clock cycle if it doesn't receive any response then it will abort that particular operation so we should note here is that uh, the clock signal used on a computer bus is not necessarily the same as the processor clock so it it often uh, it is often much faster because it controls internal operation on the processor chip so the delays that are encountered by the signals internal to a chip are much less than on a bus that interconnects the chips on a printed circuit board okay so this is about uh, multiple cycle transfers next we shall study a synchronous bus a synchronous bus so an alternative scheme for controlling the data transfer on the bus is based on the use of a handshake between the master and the slave so this concept of handshake is uh, is like a generalization of the idea that uh, like a slave ready signal that we have studied in the previous example so a common clock cycle is replaced by two timing control signals that is master ready and slave ready so the first asserted uh, by the master first is asserted by the master to indicate that it is ready for a transaction and the second is is a response from the slave that is if master ready is set that means it is indicating that the master is ready to send the data or the master is ready for a transaction and if slave ready is set that indicates it is a response from the slave saying that it is ready to receive receive the data so in principle uh, a data transfer is controlled by a handshake protocol uh, it proceeds as follows first the master places the address and command information on the bus okay so and then it indicates to all the devices that it has done so by activating a master ready line okay so uh, it will place the address and the command information by activating the master ready lines okay so this causes all the devices on the bus to decode the address the selected slave performs the required operation and informs the processor that it has done so by activating the slave ready signal okay so uh, uh, all the devices that are connected to the bus will decode the address and then uh, one of the selected slave will perform the required operation whether it may be read or it may be write and it informs the processor that it has done that particular job and uh, how it will indicate it will activate the slave ready signal at that time okay so the master waits for slave ready to become asserted before it removes its signal from the bus so in the case of a read operation it also stops the data into its input buffer so uh, there is an example of this timing uh, of an input data transfer using the handshake scheme is given in the figure so which depicts the following sequence of events there are a list of events that is occurring at a particular clock cycle we shall understand them one by one at clock t not the master places the address and the command information on the bus and all the devices on the bus begin to decode this information just check the figure figure this figure it is figure 4.26 from the textbook okay uh, so at t not the master places the address and command information on the bus and all the devices on the bus begin to decode this information okay next at clock t1 the master sets the master ready line to 1 to inform the io devices that the address and command information is ready okay the delay t1 minus t2 is intended to allow for any skew that may occur in the bus skew occurs when two signals simultaneously transmitted from one source uh, that are arriving at the destination at different times so this may happen because different lines of the bus may be having different propagation speed so that is why there may be a skew that is happening at the time uh, delay t1 minus t0 so thus to guarantee that the master ready signal does not arrive at any device ahead of this address and command information the delay t1 minus t0 should be larger than the maximum possible bus scale okay so for that reason we should keep t1 minus t0 maximum okay 
so in case of a synchronous bus case bus skip is accounted uh, for as a part of the maximum propagation delay in the uh, synchronous we said this delay as maximum propagation delay but here we are going to address it this as a bus skip so when the address information arrives at any device it is decoded by the interface circuit and sufficient time should be allowed for the interface circuit to decode the address so the delay uh, needed that can be included uh, within the time period t1 minus t0 next at clock cycle t2 the selected slave uh, having the decoded address and the command information from the bus it performs the required input operation by placing the data from its data register on the data lines of the bus so at the same time it also sets the slave ready signal to 1 okay so if extra delays are introduced by the interface circuit before it places the data on the bus the the slave must delay the slave's ready signal accordingly so the period t2 minus t1 depends on the distance between the master and the slave and on the delays introduced by the slave circuitry so this is the variability that gives the bus its uh, synchronous nature so this depends on the t1 minus t2 so this is nothing but it is a it is going to depend on the distance between the master and the slave and on the delays introduced by the slave circuitry so the delays that are occurring at the slave circuitry plus the distance between the master and slave it is going to vary depending on the devices okay it varies device device to device so th this uh, variability is giving the uh, synchronous nature to the bus okay because uh, some devices may be close to the master some devices may be far uh, far from the master in that case again the data transfer time is going to vary it going it is going to consume either less clock cycles or it may consume more clock cycles also uh, there there will be some delay in the slave circuitry okay there there will be some delay on the slave device side so in that case also uh, depending on the device it is going to vary so this is enabling the asynchronous nature of the bus next at clock cycle t3 uh, the slave ready signal arrives at the master which indicates that the input data is available on the bus however since it was assumed that the device interface transmits the slave ready signal at the same time that it places the data on the bus the master should allow for the bus queue so it may also allow for the setup time needed by its input buffer so after a delay that is equivalent to the maximum bus queue and the minimum setup time the master drops the data into its input buffer at the same time uh, it drops the master ready signal indicating that it has received the data okay uh, so next at the clock uh, t4 the master removes the address and the command information from the bus so the delay between t3 and t4 is again intended to allow the uh, bus queue okay so erroneous addressing may take place uh, if the address is seen by some device on the bus starts to change while when the master ready signal is still equal to 1 so the errors may happen uh, if the address that is seen by the device on the bus it, it starts to change while the master ready sig signal is still equal to 1 when it starts to change when the master ready signal is still 1 and it is addressing some other device at that time it will change but the slave device it will think that it is addressing some other device so in that case the errors will happen because uh, it is it is going to check for the wrong address okay so this may happen at clock t4 next at clock t5 when the device interface receives the 1 to 0 transition of the master ready signal it removes the data and the slave ready signal from the bus you can see the arrow marks that are moving okay in the figure 4.27 okay so uh, these these uh, arrow marks indicate what is happening exactly at that point of time so at t4 the master removes the address master removes the address and command information from the bus and the delay between t3 and t4 is again intended to allow for the bus queue okay so next at t5 
once the device receives the transition from 1 to 0 the transition of the master ready signal that is from 1 to 0 high to low then it removes the data and the slave ready signal from the bus okay you can see at the clock cycle t5 there is a transition from 1 to 0 of the master ready signal you can see there is a transition of 1 to 0 of the master ready signal in that case it removes the data and the slave ready signal from the bus okay so this indicates the completion of a input transfer so uh, the timing for an output operation is given in the figure 4.27 let us understand it uh, so it is it is almost same as for the input operation but in this case the master places the output data on the data lines at the same time that it transmits the address and command information so the selected slave drops the data into its output buffer when it receives the master ready signal and indicates that it has done so by setting the slave ready signal to 1 so the remainder of the cycle is identical uh, as the uh, input operation so you can go through the same steps again so in the timing diagram uh, that are given in figure two figures both the figures it is assumed that the master compensates for bus queue and address address decoding delay it, it introduces the delays from t0 to t1 and io device interface to decode the address so the interface circuit can uh, time for the IO device interface to decode the address so the interface circuit can use the master ready signal directly to get other signals or from the bus so this point will become uh, clear when we study the interface circuit in the next video so the handshake signals that are explained in both the figures are fully interlocked so a change of the state in one signal is followed by a change in the other signal Hence, the scheme for uh, of this is known as a full handshake because there is a handshake happening in the input operation also and in the output operation also. So, it is called as a full handshake. So, it provides the highest degree of flexibility and reliability for the bus. So, this completes a synchronous bus. Thank you for watching.